Hey guys, welcome to the Linux channel. This is a new exclusive video series on Linux kernel architecture and you know Linux kernel uh, networking subsystem actually. I just uh, thought of shooting this video since a long time and uh, you know finally uh, my subscribers and you know couple of folks started uh, sending me emails uh, requesting for this video as early as possible. So, so I just uh, you know prioritized and uh, finally here it is guys and you know before uh, you know uh, getting into that uh, i just want to thank uh, one of my uh, friend uh, who is also a ceo of a stealth mode startup company uh, somewhere near the bay area of us as such so he just uh, gifted me this uh, you know white pullover with uh, you know uh, linux channel uh, logo on it and uh, so uh, thanks buddy i hope you are watching this video thanks a lot for uh, you know gifting me this so let me just uh, grab on my whiteboard guys and uh, you know let's just uh, discuss you know the linux kernel uh, networking subsystem and you know the kernel architecture as such so here it is guys uh, you have the entire uh, linux system architecture and uh, you know generally if you google in uh, google images uh, and if you search for linux kernel architecture or you know linux system architecture you will find some some sort of an image like this so you know it is actually very easy to understand and uh, you know what i am going to cover is exactly this network subsystem access so you know I, before uh, getting into this i want to show you the big picture and uh, you know this is how you can actually uh, structure the entire uh, system architecture actually so this starts on the top from network apps and then this is in the user space where you can find various uh, networking apps and right below you have the hardware itself and you can have the cpu ram you know entire uh, you know peripherals you connected to the hardware such as your uh, nic card and uh, you know hard disk and uh, things like that as so you know this is the topmost layer where your uh, user apps will come into the picture and this is the bottommost layer where you have the you know physical hardware itself and you know between this you have the kernel space and uh, you know this is the kernel architecture as a whole if you see this scenario this is the linux system architecture so i hope you are now uh, uh, understood about uh, the terms and the terminology of using this as so you know in this uh, every time you use the kernel space uh, modules through the user space apps you know you use you know linux system calls so that is a sort of interface between your user space and the kernel space so which is why i just sort of did this overlap and uh, you know in the kernel space one of the most important uh, subsystems is your process management subsystem although in this video series i am exclusively talking about network subsystems so before getting into the network subsystem i just want to show you the entire big picture as so it starts with the main uh, process management subsystem and it uh, it includes this scheduler and things like that so this is where it comes and uh, you know since it has to do everything about uh, cpu management and uh, you know things like that so this is effectively meant for you know cpu as such. so it is not a strict term as such. so see this is controlling the entire system as such but we have to visualize in a kind of high level uh, design architecture as such. so when it comes uh, in terms of you know uh, really understanding this architecture it nothing can uh, match a real source code walk as such. so like i say in my most of my videos as such. so you know for each uh, getting idea of each of this module you have to really go through the linux kernel source there is no substitute for that so this is just a visual representation of you know things inside it as such. so right after the process management the next most important uh, module is uh, your man memory management subsystem and then uh, you have this uh, memory manager and in case if your system have virtual uh, you know virtual memory and things like that you know and things like that what happens is you know it comes to a part of this memory management module as so this is a part of this memory ma management uh, subsystem as so this effectively what it is doing is it is uh, you know giving you uh, an access uh, to your ram as so that is what so effectively this entire subsystem is more responsible in terms of 
as a user you can uh, use the systems available you know memory assets so that's what it is and then uh, followed by the next most important uh, subsystem is your file system and you have this uh, file system module and right below that you have support for various uh, file system types and as you can understand in linux kernel it can support various amounts of file system types and it can support ext2 ext3 ext4 and uh, you know microsoft uh, vfat file system and microsoft ntfs file system and xfs and you know things like that as well. so that is where this comes into the picture and uh, you know when you do a kernel compilation uh, you know you can disable whichever uh, file system uh, support you want to disable and you can enable whichever file system support you want to enable as well. so in case if you think ext2 is obsolete in your embedded uh, hardware you can just enable the ext4 uh, you know file system and you can even disable the you know cd rom file system and uh, other file system types and you can actually you know make your entire kernel image smaller asset so which is more specific to your uh, you know specific embedded uh, requirements so that is why you have this uh, module and of course this module you have um, right below that you have this block level device drivers as well. so effectively what is happening in this is you are getting access to your uh, you know secondary storage as well. so it can be hard disk or uh, ssd drive or things like that it can be even a usb memory stick cd rom you know things like that so you know this is the next most important subsystem and then you have your uh, device drivers you can uh, represent uh, this device driver some sometimes this way you can even represent uh, you know sometimes this way actually i like you know this kind of representation where in which right after the hardware you have the device drivers you know you can almost assume like this see none of these modules can uh, directly access the hardware it needs this device driver layer so I found this uh, diagram somewhere in the internet and uh, you know he kind of uh, there it is kind of mentioned device drivers as a separate uh, you know kind of module or subsystem I don't know but you know this gives a false illusion but you know you can in case if you are not comfortable you can even imagine as a single you know layer just before all these subsystems actually so device drivers you can see as a single layer as well. so of course in the device drivers you have a classification if you see the uh, real kernel source you can see network device drivers you can have the sound card uh, drivers and you can have you know the vga drivers and uh, you know uh, things like that as well. so it's up to you actually so you know i am more comfortable seeing device drivers this way as well. so right after the hardware uh, before you enter towards the system software layer you know for the first thing comes into the picture is device drivers uh, the next is all these subsystems inside the kernel space and uh, you can use these subsystems via socket calls you know and followed by which you have the entire uh, user space and the user space apps access so finally the last uh, subsystem which comes is this uh, network subsystem you have the network uh, uh, the core uh, layer network subsystem and underneath you have this network protocols as well. so network protocols may include uh, ipv4 stack ipv6 stack you have this uh, you know linux bridging stack you have uh, bluetooth stack you know uh, wimax and uh, things like that nfx uh, uh, nfc stack and things like that so all these things comes under uh, network protocols and right below that you have this network drivers and in case if you visualize the network drivers you can just you know forget about that and uh, you know this finally comes into the picture as well. so after the network protocols action so as one can understand network protocols it's all about uh, accessing your uh, you know network uh, port it can be a nic card or a line card or anything as well. so finally right below this you have this you know network interface cards actually as a part of hardware which corresponds to networking subsystem so you know this is how the entire uh, linux uh, system architecture can be visualized and uh, you know some folks have uh, requested me to discuss about uh, you know socket uh, sockets uh, api socket apis and things like that as a part of this video as such so i i kind of convinced them that see socket uh, 
APIs or even your uh, F open F close uh, file system APIs all these things comes under a part of exclusively as a part of system calls as so when you consider the overall Linux system architecture you know there's a lot of things to discuss as so. so it really depends I mean you want to work as a system software engineer in user space or you want to work in a system software engineer as a whole kernel space and there are also cases where in which I find uh, you know system software engineers who exclusively work on device drivers as so, so things like that and also you find this uh, you know platform engineers they do the overall porting of the entire kernel from one hardware to another hardware architecture so it depends it depends on uh, case by case basis as so, so I find uh, you know as a part of this discussion it is more important to discuss what lies in the kernel space as a whole and then you know exclusively cover about since this video is about you know network subsystem of Linux kernel so I just need to focus on this area and then I'm going to shoot also some of the exclusive videos uh, covering the other uh, you know subsystems inside the Linux kernel architecture actually so guys uh, when you extend this uh, you know network protocols and uh, you know network uh, you know uh, subsystem as a whole inside uh, this code you can find under the folder uh, you know net and inside you can find various folders as core ipv4 ipv6 bridge bluetooth ipx netlink nfc and uh, you know even more uh, folders you can find and you can almost visualize uh, you know each folder is you know a part of network protocol in some cases and uh, overall uh, you know the basic networking uh, you know context is implemented in the core folder as so de the device registration and uh, you know certain other uh, the core uh, uh, APIs and uh, you know the core uh, uh, implementation of networking subsystem you can find it in the folder called core and uh, you know you have all this protocol related uh, uh, code which is implemented in these folder access so in my next episode I'm going to do a code walk of Linus kernel you know network folder of which corresponds to this networking subsystem and uh, you know followed by which in my each subsequent video I'm going to cover about each folder and uh, some of the most important APIs and also possibly its overall architecture of each you know uh, module and you know protocol stack as such in other words as such. so that's all folks uh, for this episode i hope you liked watching this video please do subscribe to this channel and uh, i just want to remind you that unfortunately my friend who gifted me this you know pullover have requested me not to share his uh, uh, details since he is really working in a stealth mode as such. so uh, once again i would like to thank him for you know giving me this wonderful surprise and uh, you know thank you for watching this video guys thank you have a nice day